Hey, this video is going to be a little different to my prior character reviews. I'm shifting slightly to create a series that'll discuss various techniques and concepts that are used in game development that'll build up a knowledge base that I can refer back to when reviewing assets. My suspicion is that the viewer base here consists largely of students and 3D enthusiasts. So in order to speak to technical concepts, I want to run through some fundamental ones. And now for the star of the show, the piece is called Cemetery Quest Board by Eugene Sobolev. A very brief story about how this came about was I happened to see the post on ArtStation and upon examining it, I noticed irregularities in the wireframe. I reached out to Eugene and asked if I could make a video about it and he sent the files uh, shortly after. Please check out his folio if you have a moment. The video here, just as a quick disclaimer, won't touch on aesthetics too much or the high poly. This is something I could look into in a future video. And before I get into it, I was thinking about how one would go about categorizing general assets. And the best way I came up with was to start by determining the use case. Is it for a real-time application? Will it be on PC, console, or mobile? Am I looking at a hero asset, or will this be in the background somewhere? Then there's this other scale, almost like a review scale, like what you'd see from movies or games. And my own review scale looks like this. You have not usable, adequate, good, and incredible. The distribution I've seen over my years is something like this. Obviously, there are a, a few variables that determine the outcome of an asset. Time you know, is a large one. Yeah, you'll know in a, in a work environment, sometimes you simply don't have the luxury of making everything as great as you want them to be. Um, after speaking with Eugene about this, Eugene very much wanted to learn more about PBR and creating a stylized asset. So I'd consider what Eugene has here very successful for a couple of reasons. One, Eugene completed the project. You know, you have a finished asset over on his art station. The execution and stylization I think was really good. And the materials and textures looked good as well and not broken, which is always a, a very big win. As I get started, initially I want to just familiarize myself with it. I went through the mesh segments, sort out the naming convention, just familiarize myself with that as well, and I start going through the high poly. If we go back to the art station post, you can see some issues with the wireframes, uh, mainly this pole right here. You know, it's like <laughs> front and center. And um, upon seeing that, I started just looking at, you know, other parts of the asset. The next are intersecting meshes. This is not ideal to create a single asset. If we want it to break apart, that would be a different story, but this is a complete static asset, so we want to go, go ahead and merge bits, the ones that make sense anyway. And then mesh density inconsistencies. You'll, you'll notice that the skulls are significantly higher in terms of poly count than the rest of the board, which is not really what you want to do, Yes, they do catch viewers' attentions typically, like skulls are significant in what they represent, but you shouldn't have the density of it be this noticeable. Like double is good, but anything more is, is overkill. Then there are cracks for, for this one. For the ones that affect the silhouette, silhouette you want to capture it, um, like Eugene has. But you can cut corners in, in concave areas because concave parts don't contribute to the silhouette like others, like convexed so you can usually get away with poking a f uh, poking a face like like so the asset is 11,612 triangles and the the textures that Eugene authored it to were two uh, 2k textures uh, fairly like modern I guess um, these standards the textures here are much more than what I think should be used but it is a test asset so I'd give that a pass before showing comparisons, I'll outline what my goals are. Uh, one, I wanted to revise the topology without drastically changing the established resolution set by Eugene. And two, I wanted to try and make the UVs better. I wanted to get this asset on a single 2K texture. Um, I've got three versions here that we can, we can look through. The first one is the source asset from Eugene. The second is my attempt. And the third, is a decimated version of the high poly 
really just the worst kind of topology um more on this later and on top of having horrible triangles everywhere i've gone and unwrapped it like like this uh, just to show you how the asset is actually represented in in blender as a reminder almost anything a person puts together is going to be usable uh, i don't put a very strong very large asterisk here <laughs> but it's trying to remove friction that's the key when making assets so here they're all side by side and the final poly counts are up the top here i'll go over key areas showing before and after shots the main things to look at would be topology and silhouette This decimated version, I really wanted to show this to say this kind of thing wasn't possible. It really wasn't a thing uh, 15 years ago. Really, right up into the advent of Indu, Didu, and, and the substance packages. Because simply texturing the thing would have been a nightmare. You, you could transfer, you know, your basic mesh maps. Um, trying to author it in any way would have, would have been completely just a real pain <laughs> to author it through, you know, Photoshop which was the thing back then. Now, before people go and submit models like this on, on their art stations, you, you don't do this because if you know how Vertex and UV's UV data is stored, you'd have the heaviest version of an asset within a video game. You just simply wouldn't separate UV shells. Obviously, I'm using this as an example. It's a nightmare to have to rework an asset like this. If you handed this to a rigger or even another uh, modeler, they'd... <laughs> they'd probably kick your ass like <laughs> it's really just not accepted it would be the worst way to submit any kind of in-game asset um and you'd probably it's probably a firing offense if, if you ask me it's basically saying screw you to anyone having to work on the asset down the art production chain i had a look at why edge loops are pushed for like just asking that fundamental question of if we can go about making things However, why would we even need to worry about edge loops? Obviously, edge loops are a way to contain areas of deformation. And it's extremely important, especially when there is nuance, like, like in the face and, and mouths. So on a, anything animated, yes, edge loops are the way to go. And now why would you care about topology on a static mesh? And my answer to this is that it shows your understanding of the structure of the thing that you're working on. As a conclusion, going through these assets, you can see that that my version and Eugene's are one and the same. Functionally, you know, they get the job done. They they sit in that adequate um, category. I prefer the watertight mesh as a go-to request of what I'd expect from static assets. It becomes much easier because the things that you look at especially like in a texturing program become the only things that matter you can define resolutions however you know when you unwrap the thing but it's cool to see and know that entire faces aren't occluded by other ones which is why i think having watertight meshes is so advantageous i guess the one thing to consider is that a lot of the time especially when i've made art the average user really doesn't care <laughs> so we end up catching ourselves in this in this very deep hole that we've dug for ourselves of like is it good enough and nine out of ten times it's, yeah it is and you end up worrying about small details and that's not an excuse to cut corners obviously you want to go in and prove a point when you make assets but you know having fun is is also <laughs> um really important I, I think especially uh you know, when you're making video games. That is it. That's all I have for this video. I'm back. I'm making I'm making more of these things. I've got some, some cool uh, videos planned. Feel free to recommend or comment some assets that you wanna you want me to go through. I I've had some really cool comments on some of my other videos. I think I'm gonna look at a Capcom video game. Yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you so much and catch you in the next one.